Okay, so we're going to have a look now at differentiation by first principles. And this is where it really feels like A-level maths is starting to get a bit more serious because it looks confusing, but it actually isn't confusing. So we're just going to talk through what differentiation by first principles means by having a look inside this red box to begin with. So the gradient function, which is also called the derivative of the curve y equals f of x, is written as f with a dash of x, f dash of x, or it is written as dy by dx. dy by dx is how we say this. And I'm going to explain about some of these in the notation down here in just a second. This is in the formula book, but we're going to explain where this is coming from. The gradient function is the limit as h approaches 0 when you input x plus h inside the original function, subtracting, sub, um, substituting x into the original function, and dividing it by h. So this is exactly what we just did here. We put f of x plus h, in other words we put x plus h inside x squared, and we subtracted f of x, which was just x squared. We divided it by h because that was how much it was increasing by, and we had that limit of h approaching 0 at the beginning. So really what I could have done down here, instead of writing gradient, I could have said f dash of x, or I could have said dy by dx, which are the other ways that we express the gradient function that we have there. So let's talk about some of this notation. Notation note. Whether we use um, dy by dx or f dash of x for the gradient function depends on whether we start with y equals or f of, e f of x equals to begin with. So if you have a y equals x squared, you would say dy by dx equals 2x. So y would go to dy by dx. And this is by a mathematician that came up with this called Leibniz. So this is Leibniz notation. If you had f of x equals x squared, you wouldn't write dy by dx, you would write f dash x equals 2x. The gradient function is 2x. And this is called Lagrange's notation. Lagrange is another mathematician. There is, in fact, a third way to indicate that the gradient function, um, sorry, this notation has been used by Newton, but it's not really used at A level, where you put a little dot above the function. So if you have y equals x squared, it would become y dot equals 2x. But these are the two that we're going to use here. Just a quick note, though, we are going to find a much quicker way of doing differentiation um, to differentiate expressions like this without having to use limits. But this thing that we're using up here is differentiation by first principles, and they'll make it really, really clear in the question if you need to use that. So let's just go a little bit deeper with some of this notation. Don't, this isn't on the curriculum, but it's important to try and understand where it comes from. Um, rather than using h for the small change in x, like we've got here and here, the formal notation is delta x, which is this weird Greek letter that looks like this. So actually, the formula that you may see if you ever look in other textbooks is this one, where h has been replaced by delta x. So now, in fact, we have three symbols for a change in. First of all, we had this delta x from earlier on, and this is the capital delta, which is that triangle, and it's just the change in gradient. I'm sorry, the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. It's for any change at all. Delta x, with this weird new symbol that we've got, is a small change in x, so kind of like h. And then dx, when it goes from delta to our Latin letter d, that means not a small change, but an infin infinitesimally small change in x. So it's saying it's like the tiniest, tiniest gradient uh, change that it could be as, as imaginable. So the estimated gradient using some point close by was delta y over delta x, in other words, change in y over change in x. But the limit, as delta x goes to 0, changes it from change in y over change in x to dy by dx. So that's what we're really saying here. Gradient is normally change in y over change in x, which is a small change in y over a small change in x. And when that small change becomes so small, we write it as dx sorry, dy dx, I've written that the wrong way around there, which is why dy by dx is the gradient function. It's actually saying, how has y changed with respect to x? How is the rate of y changed for an infinitesimally small change in x? Okay, so there's quite a lot of, in, lots of stuff there, but we're going to be using these things loads and loads and loads. So don't worry if it all feels a bit overwhelming. The more we use it, the better you'll feel with it. So we're going to try and use the um, differentiation by first principles formula. 
And it says here that the point A with coordinates 4, 16 lies on the curve with equation y equals x squared. Okay, we've seen y equals x squared before, so we kind of know what's going to happen. The point A on the curve has a gradient g. Show that the g, the gradient, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 8 plus h. Okay, well, we're going to use differentiation by first principles here. So g is going to be the gradient function. So I'm going to, instead of writing f dash x, I'm going to write g. And the gradient is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. Well, f of x plus h. Our f of x here is going to be x squared. So if I'm wanting to do it for this x coordinate 4, I'm going to do f of 4 plus h, which is going to be 4 plus h all squared. So that beginning bit is 4 plus h all squared. And then it says to subtract f of x. And in this case, we're doing it for the coordinate 4. So we're going to subtract 4 f, f of 4, which is 4 squared. And we're going to divide that all by h. So it's kind of like what we did earlier, apart from in place of all of these x's that I've got here, I'm using 4. OK. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to expand the brackets on the top. When I expand the brackets, I would get 16 plus 8h plus h squared minus 16 divided by h. This 16 subtract 16 is going to cancel. And when I do my 8h divided by h, I will just get 8. And when I do the h squared divided by h, I will get h. So this gives me the limit as h approaches 0 of 8 plus h that we've got there. So the gradient is the limit as h approaches 0 of 8 plus h. And then for part b of the question, it says deduce the value of g. So in other words, we're now saying that h is becoming really, really tiny, so we can ignore it. And so if we're going to ignore it, that must mean that the gradient function is just going to be equal to 8 when x is equal to 4. And that makes sense, because remember we said before, if y is equal to x squared, we know that its gradient function is 2x. So when x is equal to 4, the gradient function is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8. But this time we did it here using a very, very formal process. And this formal process is uh, differentiation by first principles. So it's a very formal process. And it's worth knowing how you do this, because they will ask you questions that explicitly says to use this technique. So we're going to try it now where it is not fixed at a particular point. This time, we are trying to prove from first principles that the derivative, remember that the derivative means the gradient function, that the derivative of x to the power of 4 is 4x cubed. So whereas this one was fixed at an x coordinate 4, this one is just general, OK? So it is a general function for any x value. So I'm going to write down to begin with this formula that comes in the formula book. So first of all, let's let f of x be equal to x to the power of 4. Then here comes the formula f dash x equals the limit as h approaches 0. You can't forget that bit of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And you've got to keep writing this limit at the start each time. Well, f of x plus h, let's just work that out here. So f of x plus h is just going to be inputting f of x plus h in here. So it's going to be x plus h to the power of 4. So I'm going to have here x plus h to the power of 4. And I'm minusing f of x, which is x to the power of 4. And then I'm dividing by h. So we're actually going to have to work out what is x plus h to the power of 4. So we're going to need to do some binomial expansion on this. So we're going to do our coefficients. We're going to do the h powers decreasing and the x powers increasing. So for 4, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. The h powers going down will be h to the power of 4, h to the power of 3, h squared, h and 1. And then we're going to have 1x, x squared, x cubed, 
x to the power of 4. So when I do this binomial expansion, I'm going to get the limit as h approaches 0. Let's actually now do the binomial expansion. So I'm going to multiply down here to get all of these. I'm going to have h to the power of 4 plus 4h cubed x plus 6h squared x squared plus 4hx cubed plus x to the power of 4. And that is all going to be divided by, oh, I forgot to do this bit at the end, didn't I? Subtracting the x to the power of 4. Subtract the x to the power of 4. That's all going to be divided by h. You may have done um, these bits the other way around, but it won't make a difference. So let's simplify some of this. Hopefully you can spot in the numerator this x to the power of 4 and this x to the power of 4 are going to disappear. And now I'm going to divide everything in the numerator by h. So h to the power of 4 divided by h is h cubed. I'm then going to have 4h squared x. I'm going to have 6h x squared. I'm going to have 4x cubed. Now, as h becomes really, really tiny, h squared is also going to become really, really, really tiny because it's like a small thing being squared. h cubed is going to become really, really tiny as well. So I can get rid of any of these things that we have here. So this is going to go, this is going to go, and this is going to go. So that all we get left with, because I'm now actually assessing this and I'm getting taking the limits, is we just get left with 4x cubed. In other words, the gradient function is equal to 4x cubed. The derivative of x to the power of 4 is 4x cubed. So this is proving from first principles, okay? It's not something that people usually find that straightforward. You're often going to have to do some binomial expansion, so you better make sure you know how to do binomial expansion for doing this. And now I'd like you to try some of these questions from exercise 12b, please.